Yo, what's going on? So we've got the IGN Black Myth Wukong PC review. Now, when this starts, I'll see a couple of things to mention. Um, I'll be playing it on PS5. So the PC review, I will take as, you know, how they felt about the gameplay, da 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 When it comes to performance and how it runs on the PC, that won't matter to me right now because I'm assuming later on when I do get it on PC, these issues might be fixed or patched or whatever they decide to do. Um, but for now, it's going to be purely based on what they say about the game. Now, I know IGN isn't the gold standard. It isn't like the one, the, the be or end all of reviews. Um, I've already made a mind up about this game. I, I think it looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. I can't wait to play it. So I'm interested to see how it looks in the hands of someone playing it and talking about their impressions of it and you know, see if I have any, anything to add to that. But yeah, let's check it out. Black Myth Wukong PC Review IGN. Let's go. What about this review? As part of the embargo agreement set for this game, I am unable to show you footage beyond Chapter 2, which presents a bit of a problem because a lot of the technical issues that I have with this game that I specifically call out in this review occurred after Chapter 2. So, uh so already then, we've got technical issues in the game, but they're after Chapter 2, but they can't be shown because of embargo. So for me already, that's like, well, okay, you might as well just, you can talk about them, list them off, but without showing evidence, it's kind of hard to, you know, how, how do we know that this isn't going to be fixed up you know before then you know maybe the reviewers were like oh you know play the game and if there's any issues you find in the reviews we'll we'll fix them i don't know i'm unable to actually show them so we're going to do two different video reviews this time this first one will abide by the restrictions and only show footage from the first two chapters but we will also be posting a more complete review with the relevant footage added in on launch day and with that on with the review for black myth wukong interesting so they're going to do two separate reviews one of what they played up to, and then one with the, I've with the issues. I've never been so utterly blown away, yet simultaneously so unbelievably frustrated by a game as I have been with Black Myth Wukong. This is undoubtedly one of the most ambitious and impressive action games I've played. It's stunningly gorgeous, it's combat is fantastic, Oh, wow. It's incredibly challenging, but always satisfying to overcome, and the setting is refreshingly unique and steeped in rich Chinese culture. Yeah, my man's got the beats. Despite all of that, it often feels like it's barely holding it all together. I suffered numerous crashes, despite having a top-of-the-line setup with the GeForce RTX 4090. Not to mention the multiple times I fell through the ground and died in the final phase of a boss fight. Or the way characters would randomly switch from English to Chinese. Or the way the dialogue audio would just drop out altogether and... So for me, I think like, obviously talking about the crashes and stuff, it's kind of neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Unless you can show it happening, I think you might as well wait to complain about that in the next part. This, this, that's what, you know, the idea is to split it into two. So let's hear about the game. Also, I will say that like... The sound stuff, um, when I did the benchmark on Steam, which is my video on here, if you check it out if you haven't seen it, my sound was cutting out all the time. Cutting out, I thought it was my me. But I've, if this guy's having the same issue with the full game, then I'm wondering if it is the game's got some audio issues on PC, bearing in mind. When it comes to PlayStation or console, I'd be interested to see that review as well. So, yeah. And leave me completely in the dark during an important cutscene. It's a rickety roller coaster for sure, and there were definitely spots during the ride where I was not having a great time. But taken as a whole, this is one adventure where the bumps are worth it. Black Myth Wukong's story is somewhat of a follow up to the classic novel Journey to the West by Wu Chengen. A book that I only personally know thanks to very loose adaptations like Dragon Ball and Enslaved Odyssey to the West. That surface level familiarity didn't help much though, as the interpretation that the developers at Game Science have crafted here is laden with references to characters and events from the novel without doing a great job of bringing you up to speed on who Sun Wukong is or what he encountered on his titular journey. Okay. I had to look online to understand who Zhu Bajie was, what his history with Wukong is, and what the significance of certain encounters were, okay. because otherwise okay. I'd have been completely lost at times. Okay. You play as the Destined One, a literal monkey who wakes up one morning and decides to set out on a roughly 40-hour journey to locate the six relics of Wukong. 
While the moment-to-moment -moment storytelling is fairly unremarkable, largely due to a mute protagonist and side characters that aren't given enough screen time to develop, each of the six self-contained chapters culminates with a stunningly gorgeous animated vignette that tells a short story about that chapter's main antagonist. Each one is done in a completely different art style, with one drawn to look like a storybook, another using stop-motion animation, and another done in the style of an anime. Every cool. single one of them is beautiful and poignant, and I couldn't help but wish that the main story managed to move me in similar ways. I love that crafting stuff that looks really good. My initial read on Wukong was that it was a Souls-like, given the checkpoint system, the stamina bar that governs your actions in combat, and the dodge-heavy fighting style. But as it turns out, Wukong has more in common with traditional action games, like what you might expect from Bayonetta developer Platinum Games, than it does with anything that From Software has made. Mm, yeah. Most of the usual Souls-like conventions are missing. There's no penalty for death outside of respawning at the nearest checkpoint, you don't use a shared currency to level up your stats and yep. purchase items or upgrades, yep. and while there is gear and stats to consider, you largely just go and swap out the old equipment with the new, as yep. opposed to making choices yep. as to what kind of weapon or piece of armor you want to hold on to an upgrade. And yeah. even though I am a big fan of Souls-likes, ditching those mechanics feels like the right move for the game that Wukong is trying to be. It's far more forgiving, focused on keeping you in the action rather than pouring over menus or retracing your steps yeah. to regain your lost currency yeah. after dying, Just keep it going. and Wukong is a better, more distinctive game for it. To be clear though, when I say it's more forgiving, I don't mean that it's any less difficult than a FromStyle game. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that between this and Elden Ring Shadow of the Air Tree, I had more difficulty getting through Wukong's toughest challenges. <laughs> so, well the thing is with, with Elden Ring, like it was designed for you to explore, to craft and create, and magic, which you know was, was very strong in Elden Ring. So surface level, you'll you'll fly for Elden Ring if you know what you're looking for and you've seen people do it before. You'll you'll understand it. But when if this game is built to sort of take you from A to B to C to D to E and all the rest of it, between those two sections, between the A and B section, you're always going to be crafting, upgrading, and you're never going to go beyond the boundaries of B. You're always going to be A to B is how strong you'll get, and B to C is how strong you'll get. You're never able to get you know b to c strength in a to b area you'll, you'll only be able to be as strong as you can be between in, in every point so yeah it's gonna be it's, it's there to you know it's, it's like a, it's basically a, the whole game's like a tutorial up till the end when you put everything you know to the to use i'm assuming yeah so yeah that's why elden ring would be a bit more you know forgiving for someone who is you know um souls like matured and you know it's like this is like action game you know, checkpoint A, B, C, you know what I mean? But at the same time, those challenges never felt unfair, and overcoming some of the tougher boss fights was always a satisfying combination of learning their attack patterns, figuring out where I could maximize my punishment windows, and tweaking my loadout in ways that made the best use of my chosen powers. Achievements. Combat in Black Myth Wukong is simple and elegant, thanks in part to some tools that are really fun to play around oh, with. Nice. Success hinges on a delicate balance of Twitch reflex style gameplay mixed with careful resource management that largely revolves around a focus meter, which builds up when you land hits and perfectly dodge enemy attacks. You gain a focus point whenever that meter fills up, which you can then spend in the middle of a light attack combo for a varied combo, or you can just use a heavy attack on its own for a powerful strike nice. that can be charged even further if two, three, or even four focus points are consumed all at once. Nice. You also have access to a small handful of spells, governed by a mana meter, that are versatile enough to be useful in a wide array of situations. The Immobilize spell, for instance, freezes enemies for a short time, allowing you to get in some quick hits and potentially stagger them to allow for even more free damage. Cloud Step turns you invisible and creates a decoy for your enemies to focus on while Very you nice. Very heal nice. up, and then hit your foe with a surprise attack that can crit. Rock Solid briefly turns you into a statue that will cause an enemy's attack to bounce right Love off it. of you, Love giving it. you an opportunity for a counterattack. Ring of Fire creates a barrier around you that will initially repel enemies and grant you some health restoration, along with enhancing any stat-altering drinks that you may use while standing inside of it. And finally, there's my personal favorite, A Plug of Many, which lets you make multiple clones of yourself to all gang up on an enemy at once. Nice. 
Shadow, Shadow Separate Kronjutsu. Separate from that, you've <laughs> also got transformations, which allow you to morph into powerful creatures that you've already bested in battle. What's really cool about these is that they don't cost any mana, they're tied to a very lengthy cooldown instead, and they turn you into a totally different character, complete with an all new moveset, special moves that use their own focus meter, and more. For example, one of the first bosses that you fight is a wolf with a fiery dual blade that has a lightning fast dash attack. When you defeat him, you'll gain his transformation nice. and be able to do that very same dash attack to your enemies. And once you build up its focus meter, you'll even be able to do a hugely powerful leaping strike that can ignite foes and deal damage over time to them. Very nice. And then finally, there are spirit skills, which are earned by defeating certain more powerful versions of enemies and absorbing their essence into nice. your board. So These are effectively mine. transformations that only last for one attack and are also tied to a fairly lengthy cooldown, but it's great to be able to, for example, use the Wandering White's powerful headbutt attack to get an extra oh, stagger damage. after immobilizing an enemy. These spirit skills can also be leveled up, which makes it so that even the early game spirits never lose their strength as the campaign nice, goes on. Nice. It's an excellent blend of options, especially when mixed with some truly incredible boss fights. And Wukong introduces all of these elements at a thoughtfully measured pace so I never felt overwhelmed. Make no mistake, the Destined One is extremely powerful. Go down right is. <laughs> oh, my damage. And being in control of him is definitely a heck of a power trip. Even beyond the many powers and abilities he has at his disposal, nothing beats the feeling of just slamming a 50 foot bow staff down Ooh, really nice. his head. But I still had to be smart with how I used my spells due to the fact that mana restoration is actually very difficult. This is where the resource management aspect of combat comes into play. I had to carefully consider what spells were actually worth the mana cost, whether I should save them for a more difficult second phase of a fight, and whether or not I could capitalize on the opportunity fluid, if I were to really spend fluid. the mana in the first place. For instance, even though it's my most powerful spell, I often had to hold off on casting my Pluck of Many spell that duplicates my character since it has an extremely high mana cost. If I cast it at a bad time, the boss could simply wipe out all of my clones with an AoE attack before they even got a chance to get some damage in. Yeah. Sometimes the adjustment I had to make when I was stuck on a boss was a simple change in how I used my abilities, and the act of coming up with a new strategy and having it pay off was always extremely satisfying. While boss battles are where Wukong is at its best, there's also a highly respectable amount of enemy variety in its good, regular fights. Good, good, good. Level design is of the wide linear variety. People worry about the main game. path that leads from checkpoint to checkpoint, but plenty of opportunities to venture off that path to discover optional goodies. The rewards for exploration are great too. I've found rare crafting materials to make new weapons and armor, special enemies that drop a new spirit skill, curio items that I could equip to enhance my build, and treasure chests that might permanently increase my max health, mana, or stamina all of which made the time that I took to find them well spent. On top of that, there are also several secret boss fights to discover, nice. key items with mysterious uses that I still haven't figured out, and plenty of more reasons to stray from the beaten path and keep an eye constantly scanning the environment. The main one being that Wukong is one of the most gorgeous games I've ever played. Every environment is brimming with detail, from the chipped pieces of bark on the trees in the forest, to the real-time deformation of the snow as the Destined One moves through it while dragging his staff along. Not only that, but the animation is impeccable too, with wonderful touches and flourishes like the way your character will do a little hop step when locked onto an enemy, then change to strafing around them as opposed to just running straight on while keeping their head turned. Nice. The music and sound design is fantastic as well, with epic drum thumping battle themes and melodic flutes and chimes adding to the air of wonder and mystery as you explore the unknown. Nice, beautiful. The soundtrack's gonna be king. It's gonna be king. It's gonna be amazing. All that said, this game really would have benefited from a map, <laughs> plain and simple. The lands you explore in Wukong are beautiful, no doubt, but they're far too big and too crammed with secrets to not give you some sort of navigational help, especially the second and third chapters. This, along with the fact that it's aggravatingly hard to tell what obstacles can actually be climbed over and what's an invisible wall, can make exploration quite cumbersome. It's a good thing that the rewards are worth it. However, it's hard not to feel like all Wukong's splendor and detail came at a great cost. I experienced numerous crashes, with one particular heartbreaker happening right after defeating an extremely tough boss that I then had to defeat again. 
Several others were more minor and would typically happen as I was loading up a new chapter or fast traveling to another level, but they eventually add up to a lot of frustration. In addition to that, several times during important cutscenes, all dialogue, audio, and subtitles would drop out completely, leaving me without any clue as to what was being talked about and no way to rewatch the cutscene. Characters would occasionally switch to speaking Chinese all of a sudden, despite me having the audio set to English. The lip flaps of the English dub often don't even remotely match what's being spoken. No. Oh, thank me to the... oh, 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 finally then, the free bell sign. And most of the journal it's... entries you find along the way have... It's probably because it's not even made for like, uh, you know, a Western audience. You know, they started making this game. I, I, I suppose they never thought it'd be like, like get as big as it's become. You know, a lot of these Chinese developers, I feel like, make these games because they only really are going to release them in China and the Asian uh, communities or the Asian world. Um, or, you know, however you want to say it. But this game, this game obviously garners so much attention, and you know, people are so excited. They're like, oh fuck it, let's go, let's go for it, and they they whip it over here. But maybe they focus more on trying to get the game out near the end of its life cycle trying to finish it you know and then maybe for ah oh, you know what well, we did the best job we could with the audio I mean, this happened before it's forgivable but then again at the same time is if if audio does cut out on that then you might as well just stick it to chinese subtitles and english text which is probably what i'm going to do i'm going to be playing through chinese chinese audios english text to be honest I haven't even been localized yet into english the worst, though, was one particular fight in which the boss would plunge me down through the ground during the transition to its final phase, only to have me fall through the world once I regained control of my character. This kept on happening to the point where I thought my game was unavoidably bugged and I wouldn't be able to reach the end. But my insanity of trying the same thing over and over again eventually yielded a different result for no discernible reason. These are the kinds of technical problems that game science will hopefully look to address in post-launch patches and it's not outside the realm of possibility, as even Cyberpunk 2077 was eventually whipped into shape after its own buggy launch. I hope that those fixes come swiftly, because while I still wholeheartedly think that the things that Black Myth Wukong does so right are worth dealing with those problems, I would love to be able to recommend it without those caveats. As Game Science's debut action game, Black Myth Wukong is mostly a great success despite some major technical black marks and localization issues that are likely to cause some frustrations at launch. Combat is fantastic, thanks to a great balance of careful resource management and lightning-fast switch reaction gameplay that tested my skills as much as Elden Ring ever has, despite it being a more traditional action game than From Software style. Not only that, but there are a ton of exciting boss battles, a great variety of enemies, and the world they inhabit is an absolute treat for the eyes and ears. Its story has its moments, but relies a bit too much on having prior knowledge of the events of Journey to the West, and it really could have used a map to make its rewarding exploration measure up to the strength of the combat. All said, its strengths more than carry it through, making Black Myth Wukong a great action game that could be even greater if game science can squash the bugs. For more Black Myth Wukong, make sure to check out- I would love to see a PS5 um, review, to be completely honest with you. By rule, I mean like, Look, listen. Look, it's gonna have if it's gonna have a localization issues. Fine, there's gotta be reasons for that. You got you don't you know. I, I guarantee they never made this game with the thought of releasing it um, in the West. Honest, I honestly, I mean, it, the, funny that the story is Journey to the West, but I honestly think like you know that this 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 that this game is still on a journey. And it's still going to need some some love and attention after it comes out. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, it looks like the game's running. Uh, yeah, maybe some few bugs here and there. But, again, this is a PC version review, not a console version review. Maybe, just maybe, the console might be more stable. But and I haven't seen it. I didn't see a console version review come up. But maybe if one does, I'll definitely check that out. But anyway, appreciate you watching. I hope you're, you know, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about this review. What did you do agree? Uh, do you think eight's a good rating, or do you think you know they completely missed the mark and these things should have been sorted before it's released? But anyway, let me know. Appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot, and uh, I'll see you on the twentieth for Black Myth Wukong. Let's go.